Okay, in this episode, we're going to talk about dominance, uh, mainly strict dominance, and provide our second solution concept, which is very powerful and also very intuitive. Um, well, a mixed strategy, so let's uh, start with some definitions. A mixed strategy, sigma i prime of player i, is called strictly dominated strictly dominated by another strategy, sigma i, or equivalently we say sigma i strictly dominates sigma i prime, if and only if, all definitions are if and only if statements, player i's payoff when he plays sigma i is strictly higher than his payoff if he plays sigma i prime, regardless of what his opponents do, all right? So this inequality basically tells me that. Um, okay, so that basically means a, a, a dominating strategy or, uh, you know, yes, here in this, for example, definition, sigma i is dominating, strictly dominating uh, sigma i prime. Well, so dominating strategy is actually a better strategy because it always, regardless of for all s minus i so regardless of what your opponents do uh, playing sigma i will always give you a higher payoff so therefore it's better than sigma i prime so you should always play sigma i rather than sigma i prime however it may not be the best it's just a better strategy all right well <laughs> I am going to twist this definition, I'm not twisting, but sort of, you know, related to that. So sigma i prime is strictly dominated for player i means what? Well, there exists some strategy of player i, some other strategy such that uh, this inequality holds, right? So, so here, when I say a strategy is dominated, I just don't refer who dominates it. Um, so I just say it's dominated, but that means there should be strategy that's dominating it. All right. Well, what about weak domination? Is it possible to define? Yes, obviously. Uh, sigma i prime is weakly dominated for player i if there exists another strategy sigma i such that player i's payoff of playing sigma i is greater than or equal to his payoff of playing sigma i prime regardless of his opponent's strategy. All right, so for every s minus i, but this inequality must be strict for some s minus i. Meaning, I mean, if we do not have the second part, well, it means every strategy is going to weakly dominate itself, right? So therefore, we have to break the ties, at least for some uh, uh, strategies of the opponent. So uh, for, you know, for some cases, sigma i must be strictly better than uh, sigma i prime, but for many other cases, you know, they're just equal, all right? Uh, so this is what we mean by weak domination. Uh, by the way, just uh, notice or note that uh, although we uh, define weak domination, we don't really use it so often in, in game theory as a solution concept because it has some flaws. All right, so stick to uh, strict domination. Uh, by the way, some textbooks just call it domination, right? Uh, strategy is dominating uh, you know, or dominated. They don't really call it strictly dominated or strict dominating. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, sort of emphasize the, uh, the strictness. Well, sigma i, so here and it's sort of a very important notion. So remember, uh, strictly dominating strategy is a better strategy, but it's not necessarily the best because we don't compare it with all the strategies of player I might have. So here I am comparing it all the strategies player I may have. So sigma I is called a dominant strategy for player I if his payoff of playing sigma I is always better than payoff of playing some SI. Um, and so this inequality is true for all SI, I mean, for all strategies that player I has and for every strategies that his opponent might have. So regardless of what your opponents do, 
all right? Playing strategy SI will always give you higher payoff, strictly higher payoff than playing any other strategy you have, all right? So it's basically the best strategy you have. It's not just better than one strategy, it's better than all the other strategies you have. So it's the best strategy. Well, therefore, uh, if a player or if all the players have the best strategy, why don't they play that strategy? So this is kind of the solution, the very intuitive solution concept we have and a very strong one. A strategy profile, Sigma star, all right, is called dominant strategy equilibrium. All right, so dominant strategy equilibrium. If every strategy of or every player is a dominant strategy for that player. All right, as, as simple as that. Here, there's one important note. If a dominant strategy equilibrium exists, in many games, it doesn't exist. But if it exists, it must be unique. I think this is pretty straightforward to prove it, right? Because uh, you can't have two best strategies. If they do, uh, that means your payoff under two must be the same, but strict domination does not allow you to have equality. So therefore you can't have two bests. If you have, you must have only one best. Same for all the other players. And therefore if a dominant strategy equilibrium exists, it must be unique. I think it's pretty straightforward to prove it. So here's one simple, very simple example, a uh, two-person game. Uh, both players have three uh, strategies, A, B, C. I did not name uh, second player strategies, but fine. So here, uh, for example, playing A is a dominant strategy for player one. Why? Well, because A is going to give him three or four or zero depending on what the others do. But when I compare it with other strategies, for example, A and B comparison, A gives three, B gives one, fixing the second guy's strategy. So A basically is better than B if the second guy is playing strategy A. If the second guy, however, plays B, some other strategy, well, then A gives four, B gives two, still better. And here, if the second guy plays C, A gives zero, B gives minus one. So regardless of, so whichever column you look at, so regardless of your opponent's strategy, A is going to give strictly higher payoff than B. So A is dominating B and B is dominated by A. All right, well, what about A and C comparison? Again, A is better than C regardless. And so A also dominates C. So that means A is not better than B, but it's also better than C. So therefore it's the best strategy. It's a dominant strategy. Can I say the same thing for player two? Is, for example, do we have a dominant strategy equilibrium? Um, well, for example, A seems like better than B here, uh, but you know what? Oh, well, yeah, it's still better. Oh yes, so A strictly dominates, oh, I'm sorry. B is better than A here because three is higher than zero, but minus two is worse than minus one. So there is no strict domination between A and B. What about A and C? Zero minus one, A seems like better. Minus one, zero, hmm, sorry. Uh, C seems like better than B. So sometimes A is better, sometimes C is better. So there's no strict domination between A and C. What about B and C? Um, B is better than C, seems like here, but B is worse than C. Again, there's no strict domination between B and C. So what does that mean? That means player one has no dominating strategy, no dominated strategy, and hence he doesn't have a dominant strategy. He doesn't have a best, all right? Um, so therefore, in this game, for example, there is no dominant strategy equilibrium, uh, but player one has a dominant strategy, uh, the best strategy. Another thing I would like to mention is the following. So if there is a dominant strategy uh, uh, equilibrium, well, that's, that's very nice, very strong. Why is that? Well, because 
No player has incentive to uh, the deviate, does not have to make any guess about what the other guys are going to do. Because whatever the other guys do, playing that strategy, the dominant strategy, because it's the best strategy I have. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, when you choose a university, right, there are very, very, a lot of variables you consider. It's like the location of the university, the academic quality of the university, the fee that you will have to pay for the university, the reputation of the university, etc., etc. So think of like there are two universities in your city and they're very close by, like walking distance, all right? One university is like Harvard, the other university is like, blah, uh, you know, uh, highly mediocre university. Uh, the, the, the Harvard gives you full scholarship, the other university gives you no scholarship and you have to pay like 100k fees and whatever. So uh, academically Harvard, you know, the other one is not. So, so in terms of any aspects you may think of, uh, so one university strictly beats the other university. So then when it comes to making a choice, isn't it obvious that you're going to choose, you know, the best university or the better university? So that's the idea, if it exists. But as I said, in many games, it doesn't exist. One game where uh, the strict dominant strategy equilibrium do exist is the Prisoner's Dilemma game. All right. So most of you probably know what it is, but uh, for those who do not remember, so let me just... Uh, simply give you a, a payoff matrix. So two strategies, C, D, C, D, all right? So I have two, two, zero, three, uh, three, zero, one, one, all right? So when, it, when you look at this uh, game, uh, D, for example, is strictly dominating C, right? Because three is higher than two, one is higher than zero. So D is a dominant strategy for player one. And also when you look at the, the game is symmetric, uh, D is also strictly dominant strategy for player two. So therefore, D, D, all right, is the dominant strategy equilibrium of this game, all right? So uh, uh, we expect the players to play D, D in this game, if this is literally a one-shot game, obviously. Another sort of a remark that I would like to make is when we make this comparison, we compared those payoffs uh, by looking only uh, the uh, opponent's uh, pure strategies of the opponents. But what about the mixed strategies? I mean, is it possible that player I's payoff of playing Sigma I beats Sigma I prime? whenever the other guys play some, you know, uh, all, you know, pure strategies, but then all of a sudden this inequality doesn't hold, uh, you know, some mixed strategies. Is it possible? No, it's not possible. Well, why is that? Well, if Sigma I is beating Sigma I prime for all pure strategies, your payoff on their uh, mixed strategies, you know, when your opponents play a mixed strategy is going to be a convex combination of those. So therefore, this definition is true if I just replace this with sigma minus i and sigma minus i and say this is sigma minus i and capital sigma minus i, right? So they are identical. So whenever they are identical, we always go for the easiest one. And so instead of sigma i, we just say s minus i, all right? So you, all, you, you only need to worry about the pure strategies of the other guys. But obviously, uh, here, uh, a mixed strategy is important. So, for example, sometimes in some games, uh, a, a pure strategy, I'm sorry, a strategy may not be dominated by a pure strategy, but a mixed strategy may dominate it. For example, 3, 0, 3, 0. I'm just going to give a, one very simple example. Um, and here I have uh, 2, 0. Um, um, six uh, zero, all right, and then um, I have uh, six um, uh, one, and and then two five, whatever. I mean, the second guy's payoffs are irrelevant for now, but when I look at it, for example, for player one, uh, there is no strict domination between pure strategy A and C, right? Because sometimes A is better, but sometimes C is better. Same for B and C. Well. But the thing is, when A and B strategies are mixed together with one half, one half probability, 
All right, so with one half probability A, with one half probability B, the expected payoff of this mixed strategy is going to be four and four, regardless of the second guy's uh, uh, strategy. And so whatever the other guys do, uh, the payoff of four is going to be higher than the payoff of three or the uh, strategy C. So C is strictly dominated, but it's dominated by a mixed strategy. All right. So in this description, therefore, having a mixed strategy here is critical, but having a mixed strategy or pure strategy for the opponents is irrelevant. Okay.